Uh, hi. Um, so this story is kind of a public service announcement. Uh, it is about me, but I present it for your edification. Um, I would like to share with you a piece of life advice which will help ensure that your car is never broken into. Um, I learned this advice in, in our beloved Over the Line. Uh, I learned it back in the mid-90s when it was a very different place. Um, there was no majestic parking garage right there. Um, if you found a waffle, it probably was not from Belgium. Uh, if you wanted to buy a hot dog, nobody would let you pay $15 for it. Um, and in fact, um, Chuck D, one of my heroes, the front man of Public Enemy, he came to the University of Cincinnati to give a lecture, first he drove around town, and he said that Over the Rhine was the single hardest neighborhood that he had ever seen. Harder than South Central, harder than Detroit, it was number one, and that kind of filled me with civic pride. <laughs> Uh, because in the mid-90s, I started an internship across the parking garage at the Ensemble Theater of the Cincinnati, um, which apparently no longer exists. They, now it's Ensemble Theater Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> back in my day, we appreciated a good preposition. <laughs> given a piece of advice, and I follow this piece of advice, and over the next three years, I have nothing go wrong with my car, but every other person on staff had their car broken into, and not just staff, um, it seemed like a weekly occurrence. Many guest actors, a lot of the interns, it was ridiculous. Um, the advice was simply, keep your car empty, don't have anything in it, do not present a temptation. Do not let there be a nickel sitting on your seat. That can be enough. Um, so I did this. And, um, and I even remember one intern, she was furious that, really, why did they break into my car? They took bed sheets. Why does anybody want bed sheets? And no, it was the fact that they were in a bag. They were in a target bag. It was almost like a game. You just punch, grab, see what you have later. Um, <laughs> And even I, I just realized, it kind of interesting, the bag was labeled Target. <laughs> so, follow this advice, after my theater tour of duty in town for a few years, no problem. Uh, then I have the epiphany, what do I want to do with life? I would like to write situation comedies. Um, so first step, go to the second city in Chicago. In Chicago, I keep my car empty, have no problem. Uh, then it's time to go to L.A. I drive across the country with all my worldly possessions and a cool, crappy 89 Civic hatchback. And, um, and I have no problem, possibly because my co-pilot is an Obi-Wan Kenobi action figure. Um, and, and that kind of uh, set up that anybody named Obi is awesome, as you will find out um, in about 10 minutes. Uh, anyway, I get to Los Angeles, lived there for eight years, car empty, no problem. Um, the career thing is working out. I pay my dues, work up, um, have my big break, and it looks like career is set. Then life throws a little curveball, and some friends say, Hey, Sean, you know what a good thing to do is? I say, I love good things, tell me. I say, internet dating. Um, <laughs> I'll give it a try, and I gave it a try, and three months later, I was engaged um, to a single mom in Georgia. And if I can offer everyone a second piece of my advice, it would be, um, don't do that. Well, this uh, creates a situation where, okay, I will be moving to Georgia for a year, then we'll come back, but it becomes, um, I've given my notice to the landlord, and I get back to town, I have one week to pack up and leave, and I want to leave poetically the way I came in. I want to um, pack everything in my car, and I've since upgraded. I now have a 97 Civic Hatchback. Um, 
and it's a great car. It has a big dent in the front that it came with that. Um, I thought of the car as a reflection of myself. It's, it's really not much to look at, but it gets you where you need to go. Um, so we make a lot of hard decisions, uh, give a lot of stuff away, and, and find like the stuff that's really important. Possibly not valuable to anybody else, but it's very valuable to me. Um, I had this thing like a magic eight ball, except it wasn't black, it was yellow, and it had a giant happy face on it. Um, I worked at the 70s show for a while, and, and it gave you advice when you asked it a question, like, oh, where should I go to get pizza tonight? Groovy, sweet. Um, <laughs> uh, had all these treasures. Uh, my nunchucks, I had a pair of nunchucks that I received from the writer of Dude, Where's My Car? Um, and they were my home security system. And I, I packed that car, every cubic nanometer was filled with something. Um, the final step was my bike, my most valuable possession. I strap it on the back and I lock it down. I have four locks and it's getting late and I'm tired. And I tell my brother, um, you know, if anybody wants to take the bike, they'll just have to take the entire car. And if any of you are familiar with literary conventions, um, you might recognize that as foreshadowing. So key the landlord, go to my buddy's house, uh, buddy's apartment for one final night before starting a new life. Um, and I have a parking miracle. Uh, usually you have to hunt long and hard to find out, uh, find any place. But there, directly in front of the complex, there it is, a wide open spot on this well-lit, well-traveled road. I love it. Um, so I, I go in, spend the night, get ready to start my new life in the morning, come down in the morning, and the miraculous parking spot is available for someone else to enjoy. Um, and it's, it's a very surreal feeling. Um, on one hand, yeah, I'm about to start a new life, and this will guarantee that I'm starting a new life. And it, it also really sucks. Um, but at the same time, I immediately recognize, uh, this is kind of funny. Um, and I've just been trained uh, for all these years, look through your life, find anything bad, and that's comedy. You can build off the... Okay, um, so I would, I would find a lot more material for comedy in the uh, coming hours. Uh, so I call the police. Police, help. Somebody took my car. And the police say, relax. We stole your car. Excuse me? We towed it. You were parked illegally in front of a driveway. And I'm kind of flabbergasted, but my car's okay. Stuff's okay. Uh, they give me an address of a tow yard. And, and it's a little funky. Um, I get my friend lives in a place called North Hollywood, but the tow yard is an hour away in the South Central. Um, well, hey, it's my final day in California, my first trip to South Central. <laughs> this would be great. Um, so we get down there and, and looking around the neighborhood. Um, it was tough, but Chuck D was right. OTR. <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of paperwork, it's going to take a while. And looking at the paperwork, I noticed, okay, my car was towed, but the address it was towed from was just two miles from the precinct. Ah, oh, okay, I get it. So the thieves took my car from North Hollywood, drove it down to South Central, almost like grabbing a target bag and finding a safer place to find out what you're getting. And, and they got a lot of good stuff. Um, the police say, yeah, it's 300 bucks to get your car out. And, uh, and but they're, don't worry about it, insurance will cover it. And so I finally get in, see the car, and there's a lot of good news. Um, I had been worried about visibility through the rear windshield. And, and this will no longer be a problem. Um, yeah, the, the bike is gone, um, walking is very healthy. Um, and, and I'll be saving a lot of money on gas, because the car is a lot lighter now. Um, then, okay, brother, let's go to your place and sort this all out. And, and as we drive away, um, it starts to rain. One of six days in L.A. Uh, rains, which
which is when I learned, oh, the windshield wipers no longer work. Um, this is kind of funny. Uh, we get up, we do the inventory, yeah, all this 70s crap is gone. Um, some things that sucked were like my notebooks. I would love to have notebooks back. Um, they took Ben Kenobi, not just Ben Kenobi, they took all his Star Wars friends. Oh, that <laughs> Um, I was about to go be a dad to an eight-year-old who didn't know Star Wars. Uh, that was a, that was unfortunate. Uh, they took my ensemble drill from back in the day. Um, they said, "Oh, the nunchucks gone." Was there anything else I mentioned? Uh, if I mentioned anything, it's gone. I'm sorry. The eight ball. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll forget about that. <laughs> and interesting with uh, shoes. I can understand taking a pair of shoes. But they would, they took like one shoe out of three different pairs, um, which would suggest we're dealing with a one-legged thief. And also, apparently, the uh, thief was a Bengals fan, because so they took a Bengals jacket, and um, and and maybe the thief is dead today, because that's just a target. <laughs> so anyway, um, call insurance to get this straightened out. And at first, it's a, a very polite conversation. And my friends at AAA Insurance say, oh, Mr. Dillon, this is terrible. We'll help you out here. And then at some moment, the, uh, the kind woman got quiet and said, oh, um, Mr. Dillon, uh, you only have collision insurance. Excuse me? Um, yeah, you do not have a comprehensive policy. Which is when I flash back to across the street to the Ensemble Theater of Cincinnati where I learned you don't keep anything in your car, let your car be empty. And I followed this and I was confident that I will not need comprehensive because there will never be anything in my car to take. And I lived back by, by that until the one day where instead of nothing, I had everything. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's um, something I hope you learn from. Um, there are two quick addendums to this tale. Um, get to Georgia, and a few months later I get a letter from the uh, Los Angeles County Traffic Department. And I'm excited. All right, are they going to make things right? Like, will get reimbursed? Um, no, it is a ticket for $180 for parking legally in front of the driver. Uh, and, and secondly, just to wrap things back, um, this isn't about me, it's about you. I want to give you a life lesson. And I'm sure many of you are thinking, hey, I am parked in the toughest neighborhood in America right now. Um, did I leave anything? <laughs> and I want you all to learn, but unfortunately many of us only learn the hard way. Um, so I'm going to go out and I'm going to break into your cars right now. Your stuff is gone. It's going to suck at first, but give it some time. Eventually, it's going to be hilarious.